Hi friends and welcome back to Finishing the Score where you can follow along with my songwriting journey and I share the tips and tricks I'm learning along the way. Today's video is the last of the three-part series on how I use Notion, the web-based note-taking app, for my songwriting. In the first video I showed you how the note-taking tools can be used to help serve your lyric writing better. And in the second video, I showed you how I set up my music dashboard and my songs database to keep everything organized. In this video, we're going to be talking about some of the other databases I have in my system that help support my songwriting practice. If you haven't heard of Notion yet, it is a web-based note-taking app that gives you the tools and flexibility to create custom pages and databases in whatever layout you choose. You can learn more about Notion by going to their website, notion.so. All right, let's get started on my music dashboard, which you'll recognize from part two of the video series. Today, we are focused on the links under the pages heading. We've already discussed the artist log and the My Songs database, but I will show you the others today. We're gonna get started with the destination writing database. But first, some definitions. What is destination writing? Destination writing is a type of sensory free writing where you write on a particular prompt using sense-bound language. The idea is that you take that particular prompt, you set a timer, and for the amount of time on the timer, you just start free writing everything that comes to mind. But you want to make sure that it is bound by the senses. So that is sight, sound, taste, smell, touch, and movement. So using active verbs is a really good way to help bring some of that sensory feel into it. This is a technique I learned in my Berkeley online class, Commercial Songwriting Techniques, with the professor Andrea Stolpe. I found this to be a very illuminating process, and, and it's got two main advantages. One is it helps build the skill of being able to write with sense-bound language, which brings out a much richer lyric as you're writing songs later. But also, it's a great way to generate ideas for songs that you would have never thought of otherwise. While you're digging into some sense-bound language, you might uncover a particular emotion around a, an event or a, a person or an activity that you find would be a good source of material for a song. I created this database to collect together and keep track of all my destination writing samples. So the database itself is pretty simple. Each one of these items is a specific entry of destination writing. Under name, you can see the specific destination, person, or object that I did the free writing on. You can see the date that it was written. I've got this uh, checkbox called Write Song which basically says, did I think that there was something out of there that could be worthy turning into a song? So if so, I check that. And then I have a link to my song. So if, it, if something did get turned into a song, I can link directly to that page. Let's make a new destination writing as an example. I click new, uh, it gives me a blank page and I've actually got a template here, a free writing template, so I can click on that. It's very simple. It just leaves a blank space where I can write. And then I've also got a view into my database called the title notebook. So let's say I do my destination writing, I finish this, and I comb through looking for the items that I think would make good titles. And if I find a couple of them, I can go ahead and type them in here, title one, title two, etc. And you can see that those automatically get linked to this particular destination writing. So I can see where I came up with that if I want to look at it later. And this is a great segue into my next support database, which is the title notebook. So let's go ahead and look at that. I mainly use this in the way that I just described, where I can use my destination writing template to drop title ideas into this database. But I can also come in here and if I, if I think of a one-off title that I think might be good, for a song, I can just enter that here and it becomes part of this title notebook table. And the primary thing that I can use this for is if I want a song idea or I, I have a song and I think that maybe I've come up with a good title in the past, I can scroll through here and see if something sparks an idea. It's really about sparking ideas and generating song content. Next up, I've got the songwriter's toolbox. So. When I started doing more regular song analysis to understand how other songs were built, I started noticing patterns of techniques that kept coming up. 
I decided it would be valuable to collect them in one place so that I could access the ideas more readily if I am stuck. Now, the tools here are corrected, collected from a variety of sources, books, classes, and my own analyses of songs that inspire me. So for each one of these, the name is a brief description of what the, the technique is, but in here I, I will always link to um, a sample that, uh, that has the technique, that uses the technique. Um, additionally, I also have these tags. So the tags that I have include melody, harmony, lyrics, groove, song form, and vocal arrangement. I might add more if I come up with more things that I want to categorize these things as. Um, so for example, um, this one, the hook line starting just after the downbeat of the groove, that's related to both melody and groove. So I have that tagged in here. So if I'm writing a song and I'm looking for help with melody ideas, I can come into the toolbox if I want to and filter for melody ideas or harmony ideas and look and see if any of them might work well in the song that I'm working on. I have plans to make more videos on these specific tools and how I've used them in my own songs. So if you're interested in learning more about any of these specific tools, please let me know in the comments below. And moving on to the songwriting exercises database. This one's pretty new and very sparse at the moment, um, but I started realizing that I was hearing a lot about different types of songwriting exercises from books and podcasts. Uh, we've already talked about sensory free writing. That's one of the ones here. Um, none of these have any content, content in them right now, but I'm just starting a list of potential songwriting exercises that I might want to do in the future to help spark ideas or develop my craft. Next up is the songwriting resources database. This one is another pretty simple one. It's got um, just name and type. So these are resources that I've collected over time that have really helped me develop my understanding of songwriting, my understanding of writing theater, uh, those kinds of things. So I've got a, a lot of books on here. I've also got some uh, organizations, some YouTube channels, uh, websites. Um, and so these are some resources that I've collected. I'm probably going to have future videos on this channel where I talk about some of these specific resources um, just because I think more people should know about them. So um, that's what this database is. Moving on to the last one, which is the spark file. And time for another definition, a spark file. This is a term that I picked up from Susan Blackwell and Laura Camion on their podcast, The Spark File. They define a spark file as a place where you consistently collect your inspirations and fascinations. Fun fact, the primary reason that I am working with Notion right now is that I was looking for a place to create a digital spark file. I had originally been looking at Evernote because I wanted the ability to be able to pin things from the internet, but right as I started using Evernote, they switched over to a subscription only model. So I looked around for other options as I was just getting my feet wet. And that's how I found Notion and I have never looked back. So here we are on my Sparkfile page. This is a page, not a database. So you can see that I've got a couple links here to some other pages that are related to my creative pursuits. Um, moving down below here, we have what is the master Sparkfile itself. So this database is called Inspiring Media and in it, each entry is something that I personally find very inspiring. And then I've got a type which characterizes them as a song, an album, a podcast, etc. I happen to have a lot of songs on here because I am a songwriter. Um, I've got some comments here to, to just get at what I find particularly inspiring about that thing. I've got author, link to the song toolbox. So for example, um, this one, Hallelujah, Jeff Buckley. Um, I happened to have linked um, that that song uses a, a secondary dominant of major three seven chord that resolves to a minor six. And that was something that when I was listening to it, I was like, ooh, I like the sound of that. Um, I, I wonder what it is. And so uh, I added the inspiring media entry for the song and then linked it to that particular tool that I found in the song. So later, if I find that that tool somewhere else, I can link it to other songs here and I can create this web of 
things that I find inspiring and the tools that go with them and then what is used where, which I'm, I'm really excited to start building. And the next relation is to the My Songs database, which allows me to link to one of the songs I'm working on. If there's a song in my Spark file that inspired it, then I can link those together in this particular relation. For example, um, my song Love You Like a Sister is linked to this Spark file entry called Expectations of a Man. Uh, that's a comedy song in a similar vibe of what I was going for with this. So that, that's why I linked these two together. And just one other fun thing about the Spark file is I can have multiple views of, of different things. So for example, um, I've created a view that's just um, quotes that I have found inspiring as I've heard them. Um, so if I want to get some inspiration from some quotes, feel uplifted, I can come in here and take a look. And that's it for how I use Notion to support my songwriting. Have you ever heard of a Spark file or destination writing? Um, maybe that's something you want to consider incorporating into your creative practice, possibly on Notion, if you thought this was an inspiring way to do it. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to follow along with my songwriting journey, please hit subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Finishing.